Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to create a custom connector in Power Platform that can connect to APIs in ChatGPT. We will leverage various models in ChatGPT like DaVinci for text completion, DALI for image generation, or Codex for code completion. And thanks to the custom connector, we can leverage these ChatGPT APIs directly in Power Apps and Power Automate. So let's check it out in action. In Power Platform, a custom connector is a tool that allows you to connect to custom APIs and you can leverage them directly in Power Apps and Power Automate. The documentation for APIs for ChatGPT, if we click Get Started, we can see the different applications that we can build and their associated APIs. Let's begin with image generation. This allows us to generate images from text using the DALI models. The documentation has the introduction explaining what this API does. And then in usage, if I was to pick curl, I can see the API endpoint, the header attributes that I need to pass, which includes the open API key, and then the request body, the prompt, that's the text that I pass in order to generate an image, specify the number of images that I would like the API to return, and the size of the images. And here is an example of this in action. So let's try create a custom connector to leverage this custom API. In Power Apps, if I head over to More and Discover All, under the Data section, we have Custom Connectors. I will go ahead and pin this to my left navigation. Under Custom Connectors is where I will go ahead and create a new custom connector from blank. I will give this connector a name, click Continue. Here I can upload an icon for this connector. I uploaded the chat GPT icon, can give it a background color, description. The host will be api.openai.com, HTTPS. Next, I will head over to the security tab. The authentication, I will pick API key. The parameter label, I will call it API key. The parameter name would be authorization. That's where I would have to pass bearer space the open API key. Next, I will head over to definition. I will create my action. I will call this image generator. I can give this a description. Operation ID. I will call it image generator. The request. I can import from sample. Here, I can start providing the details. The URL, I'll simply copy and paste that URL. Headers, that's content type, application JSON, paste that in here. And the body, I will copy the request body, paste that in here. This is a post request, so I'll pick post and click import. Now content type, I'll go to edit. The content type that I would like to leverage is application JSON. I can make this internal and make it a required field. Click back. Body, I'll go to edit. I need this from the user, so I'll make it required. And then the three properties within it. N is the number of images that I want to be returned. Can add a title here to make it more descriptive for the user. I can even set a default value. I'll pick one. I'll make this required and I'll make it important. I can even provide a static list of values for the user to choose from. So let's say they can pick either one image or they can generate five or 10. I'll click back. Prompt, go to edit. This is the text that the user needs to enter to generate images. So I'll give it that title. Once again, it's required. It's important that the user plugs this in. 
I'll click back. And then size. This is the image size. As per the API, it supports the following image sizes. I'll default it to this value. Once again, I'll make it required, important, and I'll provide a static list of values for the user to choose from. Now, once I'm done with this, I'll go ahead and create the connector. It says the connector has been created successfully with custom connectors. You can also make those same modifications using the Swagger editor. You can also write custom code. However, here I will straight out go and test this new connector. Now, in order to do that, I need a connection. So I'll create a new connection. It asks me for the API key, which would be in the form of bearer space my API key. When I'm signed in to the API documentation, I have the link to view my API keys. I'll generate a new key. I'll copy my API key, paste it right here, click create, and this will go ahead and generate the connection to ChatGPT. Now, if I head back to custom connectors, here is my ChatGPT connector. I'll edit this. Go to test. This time the connection that I added shows up right here. And I can go ahead and test this. I'll say cat. Click test operation. And we can see the response, which is status 200 succeeded. Here is the response body. Here is the URL to that image that it has generated. Now I'll go ahead and copy the body. Go back to definition. We filled in the request details, but now let's fill out the response details that this action provides. Here, you can import from sample. So I'll just plug in that response body that I received, click import, and it generates the response payload. I'll go ahead and update my connector. So my custom connector is now successfully updated. Let's see how we can bring it into a power app. I'll go to data, add data, search for the name of my custom connector, select it, pick the connection. This is connected in my app. I will insert a text input control, give it a hint text, insert a button and insert an image control on select of the generate button. I will call my chat GPT custom connectors image generator method. And right here, notice it's asking for all of those important properties. Prompt, that's the text to generate the image. That will come from my text input dot text. How many images to generate? It's providing me a list of all the static values that I set in the custom connector. I'll pick one and then the size of the image that I wanted to return coming from those static values. I'll pick the specific size and close. Now the response of this action, I will store in a variable called var response. So let's give this a try. I'll say lion click generate. It's going ahead and calling the chat GPT API. Once that's done, if I explore var response, this variable now has a property called data. That's a table. So for the image controls image property, I will use var response dot data, which is a table. I'll only take the first value from that table dot the URL, which is the URL that will give me the generated image. Let's try it again. And this, we can make it even more dynamic because we've got properties to play with. I can insert a drop down where the user can pick the number of images they would like to generate. 
And let's say I give it those same option values, one, five, 10. So for generate, instead of hard coding one, I can point to that dropdown dot selected dot value. I will get multiple images if the user picks a number higher than one. So this hard coded experience of getting just the first image will not suffice. I'll insert another dropdown, which is basically the image number. The items property for this, I will simply use sequence of the counter dropdown value that the user picks. And for image, instead of just hard coding it to first, I can use the index function to pick the item at index, DRP index dot selected dot value. Let's try this. I'll say give me five images for tiger. That's the first, second, and so and so forth. The same custom connector I can also leverage in Power Automate. For my flow, I'll add a new step, search for chat GBT. Here's my action. All I need is to provide the prompt. It's a manually triggered flow. I create a text input where the user will provide the prompt. I can straight out leverage that to generate the image. I'll save the flow. Then I can run this flow. Search for Houston. Run the flow. The flow triggers. The flow has completed. And here is the output from the image generator custom action. Let's check out text completion. That's the conversational AI chat GBT. There is an option to open this example in playground. Here on the model, you can see the various models that are available for you to call. And there are various other properties that we can update. Here it's trying to create a tagline for an ice cream shop. I'll submit this and it provides me the response. Let's click on view code. Once again, all the information is available for us right here. Let's go ahead and frame another action now in our custom connector. I'll call this chat GBT AI. For the request, I'll click import from sample. Once again, it's a post request. Here is the URL, the header, content type, and the body. Here are the details. Paste, import, content type, default value, application JSON, required internal. Click back for the body. This is required. Frequency penalty zero, required yes. Internal, max tokens. 64 required internal model. I'll set it to DaVinci 001. I can make this even more dynamic by allowing the user to pick those models by providing a static list of values. However, in this case, I will just set it to the default value required internal presence penalty, set it to zero required internal. Prompt is what I want the user to enter. I'll make it required, important. Temperature, I'll set it to default 0.4, make it required and internal. And finally, top P, I'll set it to one, required internal. Update the connector. I will pick test, select chat GBT AI. All I have to provide is the prompt. Let's say I ask a question, what is Power Apps? I'll test this operation. The key part here in the response is choices, which is an array within which I get the text property, which has the main response. I'll copy the information available in the response body. Go back to definition, select chat GPT AI. Go to response default, import from sample, paste the body, 
click import and update the connector. Once my connector is saved and updated, back to my power app. Here, I'll add text input. I'll give a hint text and add a label control right below. Add a button. I'll call this chat. On select, I will call chat GPT dot my new action, which is chat GPT AI. Now notice it's asking for all of these values. I can see all their default values. Prompt is the text that the user enters in this text box. I've just completed the action by setting all the default values. I've set the response in a variable. Let's try this. I'll click chat. This will generate my response. The actual text is in the choices table. So for my label control, I can use that variable dot choices, which is the array, so tabular data. I will pick its first value dot text. So we can see the response from ChatGPT. And of course, the same experience we can leverage in Power Automate. All I need to give here is the prompt. And let's test this out. Enter my prompt, run the flow, and here is the response that I receive. Let me show you one simple example with Microsoft Teams. I'll create a new flow, skip from the Microsoft Teams connector. I'll pick when keywords are mentioned, message type channel, keyword to search for, call chat GPT. I'll pick my team. I'll pick the general channel in the team. From this, I need to get the message details. So I'll provide the message ID, message type. It will be a channel related message. Which team? I'll pick my cat team. Which channel? I'll pick my general channel. And the detail of the message is what I would like to pass to my ChatGPT custom connector API. So I'll search for ChatGPT, pick my ChatGPT AI custom connector action. Prompt will be dynamic content, get message details action. I will pick body plain text content. And then I would like to give a reply with a message in a channel as the flow bot, post in a channel, message ID. I will pick that from the trigger action, dynamic content, team, cat team, general channel, and message will be dynamic content response from chat GPT AI action. The response is in that text property. So I'll select that. Go ahead and save my flow. Let's test it out in Teams. In my cat team's general channel, I made a post. Power Automate triggers because it finds that keyword and it's gone ahead called chat GPT AI text completion model to get me the response. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you so much for watching.